Let's pray. Father, we love you. We, we are so grateful, Lord God, that you saw your world and including us lost in the darkness, unable to find our way out, unwilling, undesiring to find our way out. And yet you saw us, knew us, called us, chose us, loved us, and gave us your son, the light of the world. We ask, Lord God, Holy Spirit, that you will fill your people gathered before you in this very place and our places and this very morning, opening our eyes to see ever more clearly our Lord Jesus Christ, bending our wills to follow him ever more nearly, igniting our hearts to love him ever more dearly. And all these things we ask in his mighty name. Amen. 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 Please be seated. One of the um, <coughs> amazing things about this liturgy is we begin singing all glory, God, glory, lot, and honor. And, but then we end up doing something, and we, we didn't do it this morning, so we're going to do it now. Uh, go ahead and stand, please. <coughs> There's a line in here where uh, traditionally, when we're, when we're reading together, we ourselves, having sung all glory, love, and honor, also scream out, crucify him. We ourselves. So I'm going to pick up just these sentences, and I'll cue you, and you're going to cry out, crucify him. Then what shall I do with the man you call the king of the Jews? Sorry. Let's get, yep, the king of the Jews. And they cried out again, crucify him. And Pilate said to them, why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released for them Barabbas. And having scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. Please be seated. It's one of the geniuses of this liturgy that um, we're sort of whipsawed inside of, inside of about 30 minutes on glory, laud, and honor and crucify him. It's interesting. Uh, if we were, if you didn't, at the time, um, it would have been understandable for almost everybody to think a certain thought. And frankly, even when we know the story today or those who have heard the story, but may not know it, if you hear the difference, they may have the same thought too. What a loser. What a loser. Runs around, raising a ruckus, name gets known, everybody knew him. And here he is, he comes in all high and mighty, but look at him now. What a loser. The Romans would surely have thought this. We think we live in a tough and depraved society. Roman society was well and truly depraved. Well and truly depraved. I won't even describe the things that men thought they could do at their whim with anybody or anything. For sure, for sure, they would have thought that this guy, Jesus, was a loser. For nothing. Humiliated, bleeding, sweating, naked, tied up for everyone to see. It's not even a big deal. What a loser. And they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it and sat on it. And then he spread their cloaks on the road and others spread leafy branches that they had cut from the fields. And those who went before and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest. And he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. When he had looked around at everything as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. Hosanna, save us, is the cry. Deliver us, 
rescue us. Can't you see what a mess this is? We're in this temple, but it's ruled by a bunch of traitor bums. A bunch of power hungry, self serving, Rome serving bums. And you want to talk about Rome? Yeah, you can travel the streets at night, but you cross Rome and you get killed in front of your family and friends and hung out until the birds pick you apart. Yeah, you can travel the road safe at night, but cross Rome and you're on that cross. Save us. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our Father. Hosanna in the highest. The new Israel led by God. It is true that there was this, this vision, this expectation, this yearning that God himself would come into the temple and fill it with his presence again and set everything right. That the coming kingdom, hear it, of our father David, the, the, the high point of Israel, would come and Hosanna save us in the highest. He enters the temple, then he goes to Bethany. The drama is still teased out. There's a Last Supper. There's a betrayal. There's prayer with his very few followers. And he says to them, my soul is sorrowful even to death. Remain here and watch. And going further, he fell to the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Remove this cup from me. Not what I will, but what you will. This word Abba, it actually isn't quite the um, childish daddy call, but it is the intimate word for the father. Uh, Lauren and I, when we were in Mary student housing, um, all, the, all the decks had been, ride, had been rotted away. So we had, an up, we had a, a second level um, apartment where you opened up the, the sliding glass door and it went right down to the ground. <laughs> so you were sure to have at least two locks on that thing, right? <laughs> to make it really hard for someone to get out. Um, but we had this marvelous, marvelous four. So on the, uh, they had a landing and four apartments around it. Right? Remember this? Remember those days? Um, and um, uh, and it, we were in one apartment, my wife and I, and she's Canadian. And next to us was a Dominican couple um, who years later um, chased me down on a dirt road actually not dirt road, on an east-west highway in the Dominican Republic and said, Mateo! <laughs> Different story. Um, across from them was a Hebrew couple and next to them was a Dutch-Mexican couple. Uh, the son was brilliant. He spoke Dutch, Spanish, English, and was picking up Hebrew. He was amazing. Mm -hmm. And he knew who to say what to. So I remember one time I was talking to him and he started to talk to me in Spanish and he stopped and he could just sort of see the little mind go. He doesn't speak Spanish. And so he switched to English and started talking to me in English. It was brilliant. But one day I was working on well, something. We had the windows open, a hot Texas afternoon, um, and I had the windows open. And he was, um, one of the little boys was outside playing. And you know how kids get, get that one syllable and they say it 500 times. <laughs> And so I was at, my, at the table in the, in the dining room and outside the window, and uh, this, uh, this kid had this syllable going, and he goes, Abba, 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 I'm thinking, kid, you're killing And so I look out the window, and it was the Hebrew boy at the top of the stairs, and his dad was at the bottom of the stairs doing this. And he's saying, Abba. Abba, 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 Abba. He was beautiful. He was, I don't know, he's probably eight, nine, ten. And it was, it was beautiful. This word for his father, and he's crying out to him Father, all things are possible for you. Remove this cup from me. This is not a grotesque scene of a son asking a father not to torture him. It has been turned in that way by people who frankly don't understand what happened and who don't want to understand and who come at it with frankly a hard heart. This is the realization that what is coming 
is horrific beyond human understanding. And the simple cry that as, as, as Jesus, fully human and fully God, would prefer not to go through it. And yet it is a cry to the Father, because this is not um, the Father making the Son to do something. This is a Father, Son, Holy Spirit rescue mission, totally agreed upon, totally planned out together, totally implemented as one. So this is much more like saying, Father, keep us true to our plan. Here we go. Keep us true to our plan. Here we go. And immediately while he was still speaking, Judas came, one of the 12, and with him a crowd of swords and clubs from the chief priests and the scribes and elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, the one I will kiss is the man. Seize him and lead him away under guard. And when he came, he went up at once and said, Rabbi, and kissed him. And they laid hands on him and seized him. Just the first layer of betrayal. They took him to the high priest. The high priest stood up in the mist and asked Jesus, have you no answer to make? What is it that these men testify against you? The highest ranking man of those who were set aside to know him and proclaim him to bring God to the people and let the people approach God by way of sacrifice. This is the man who is now mocking Jesus. Have you no answer? What is it that these men testify against you? But he remained silent and made no answer. Now then, after Easter, as we head into the Easter season, there will be many reasons to proclaim, testify, witness. It's a funny thing in the Christian life. We have to hold multiple things together in the same place at the same time. So we have an example of testimony to come, but we have an example of absorbing, even quietly, suffering in this moment. They live together in Jesus. They must live together in us. He stood before him. He remained silent and made no answer. Again, he asked him, are you the Christ, the son of the blessed? Are you the anointed one, the guy, one God gave a special blessing to, who will lead us out of this mess, who will indeed, Hosanna, indeed save us. And Jesus does say, I am. You will see the son of man seated at the right hand of power. Do you think you have power? And coming with glad clouds of heaven. So he moves from silence to utter clarity. And yet even then, it doesn't penetrate their hearts. They say, what further witnesses do we need? Not we've heard our God. We've heard a pretender. We've heard a pretender. You've heard his blasphemy. What is your decision? They condemned him as deserving death. Death is deserved. But it is the undeserving who will bear it on behalf of those who deserve it. Death is deserved. But it is the undeserving who will bear it on behalf of the deserving. He will do it knowingly and willingly. It will be his very plan since the beginning of time. It's a plan that flows from his very character. When we pray the prayer of humble access or communion, we acknowledge that God's very character is mercy. His very character is merciful. It's his reflex. It's his highest desire. And you say, what about judgment? Judgment will come. Judgment will come. But frankly, you don't want judgment. You may want it for somebody else. But honestly, that's not your call. And you don't want it for yourself. So we will acknowledge that God's very character is mercy. And that this very scene is what it means. It means to go to the cross to absorb the pain, mockery, and humiliation of others, especially those in power. Now then, I know, right, you know, if that light rings political bells for you, hit the off switch, right? Just hit the off switch. The fact is that he is humble and merciful before people who think they have power. He doesn't get trapped in his own rules. He will free his creation from the dominion of sin and death and all that is killing us. 
by his own death. Self-sacrifice is the only way to Hosanna. And he will do it because it is very, his very character. It is his very essence. It's the only way he knows how to act. When we are stupid, malicious, silly, arrogant, and ignorant, his reflex is to treat us better than we deserve. And if you think that's not true, you look at the sequence of events. More betrayal. Certainly you were one of them. You were a Galilean. But he began to invoke a curse on himself and to swear, I don't know this man of whom you speak. We can tear people down with our words. We can tear people down with our silences, can't we? Right? The right silence, perfectly timed, can imply the worst thing. And immediately the rooster crowed a second time. Peter remembered how Jesus had said to him before the rooster crows, twice you will deny me three times. And he broke down and wept. As soon it was, as it was morning, the chief priest held a consultation with the elders and the scribes of the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and delivered him to Pilate. So from those who thought they had religious power, hand off him to those who think they have political power. And he does have some amount of power in the moment. But as we all know, he has no true authority. Isn't that the funny thing? Both the religious leaders and Pilate, the political leaders, they have some power in the moment. They can impose some pain in the moment. But they have no true authority. They're cozy. In word and in action. And Pilate said to him, are you the king of the Jews? This is important. Pilate is, is in this place to enforce the law and the authority of Rome. So it's a key question. We know who the king is. He's even called a son of God. But his name is Augustus. Do you say that there's another king and that you're him? Be careful with the answer. It could go badly for you. He says, you have said so. We could spend hours just on that. <laughs> the chief priest accused him of anything. Pilate again says, have you no answer to make? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further answer. So that Pilate was amazed. When small power is not met with small power, it's amazed. Our fallen and faulty wiring says, if I'm going to give it to you, you should give it to me. When someone doesn't, and when you do, and I'm more powerful, there we go. You hear what I'm saying? Right? Yeah, come in. That's right, that's safe. Bring it. And then when I take you down even harder, I feel you even better. Small, petty power is amazed when it is not met with power. Those who are dependent on the bald use of power are amazed when they are met with steadfast purpose, steadfast knowledge, steadfast vocation, instead of more petty power. So false power gets what it deserves. They compel a passerby, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus. There must have been, these folks must have been part of the community after the fact, because they're mentioned by the community now. That's fine. That's fine. They were known. They brought him to a place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull. They offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. They crucified him. They just can't stop humiliating, can they? They nail him to a cross, bleeding, sweating, evacuating himself, moaning. And then they split his clothes up. 
in the paper list. And the chief priests and the scribes just can't stop. Just can't stop. The petty power has to rub it in. He saved others, but he can't save himself. You hear the mockery? He saved others, but they can't even have the decency. Not to rub it in the face of a man whose life is leaking out before them. If you're the Messiah, the king, come on down that we may see and believe. And those who crucified him joined him. It just doesn't stop. When the sixth hour had come, there was darkness over the whole land, the ninth hour. And the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lema sabachthani. Which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Our greatest fear is his greatest pain. We have many fears, but I would offer that perhaps one of our greatest is to be suffering, lost, and alone. Seventy-five percent. I love country and western music, so I'm not mocking. But seventy-five percent of country and western music is I can do anything as long as you're by my side, right? It's kind of awesome. It's kind of awesome because there's a truth to it. We can endure much when we have someone there who sees us knows us, loves us, but to do it alone, that is crushing. Jesus uttered a loud cry and breathed his last, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And when the centurion, who stood facing him, saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, truly this man was the son of God. True to the end, the least expected, Get it. <laughs> the least expected. Get it. This pagan sees it and gets it. How often the wrong people get it. How often the right people miss it. And this is not just a, a bald sort of contrary statement about, oh, see how, oh, whatever, Christians are bad. See how Christendom is bad. Um, see how whoever is bad. There's this simple truth that we would do well to humbly lay down our pride and just ask, Lord God, Holy Spirit, show me my blind spots. I'm crying out loud, I got collar. Surely I get it right. Can't we assume that? <coughs> I church church every Sunday. Surely I get it right. Can't I just assume that? I've been doing BSF for 93 years. <laughs> Surely I get it right. Can't I just assume that? This would say no. This would say it doesn't matter who you are. No matter how saved you are. You still have more in your heart and your mind to be formed be illuminated upon the depths of Scripture to know Jesus even more intimately, to know his love for you ever <laughs> more deeply, and down in your molecules. Any of us can lay ourselves before him in this season and say, all right, Father, I know I'm not done yet. At least I think I know it. Okay, maybe I don't know it, but I would like to know it. Please, work it more deeply into my thinking, into my emotions, and in my actions. That you are the Son of God. I want to get it more and more. Truly, this man was the Son of God. Wait, what? The whole story we've just told is the story of a loser. If he was the son of God, wait, 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 wait. Maybe two things come out of this subtle admission. One, if he is the son of God here, then it makes us look back on the whole other part of this story and ask ourselves, if he's the son of God, 
then the story can't mean food. It has to be reinterpreted in a different way. You mean that this story is the way that it is supposed to be? This is the way that you want it to be, son of God? This is your story, my king? I mean, you're not just sort of being silent because at the end of the day, you're going to come back and like ground pound Pilate. It's not a moment of, oh, you just you wait. You're not saying, you're not silent outside, but inside you're thinking, just wait, dude. I'm coming for you. That's not what's happening. It's not what's happening. He wouldn't. So interesting. He will take all of their false authority and false power and all the ill effects of it and all the, the demonic efforts behind it. And he will take it upon himself and he will defeat it. This is victory. This isn't defeat and then we pull it out in the end. Resurrection isn't a Hail Mary pass. Resurrection is the simple culmination of this life lived. It is the path. It is the method. It is the strategy. Walk in it, don't walk in it. It is the king's way of doing things. Dang it. Dang it. Like Jesus, I wish there were a different way. If Jesus absorbs in his body the pain and suffering of the world and returns it redemption, strong redemption, strong reje rejection of evil, yes, absolutely. If he takes it in his body, then his body must do the same. If he takes it in his body, then his body must do the same. Of course, there's a second implication. Hey, if this is the Son of God, and maybe, just maybe, it's not the end of the story. Let's pray and I'll see you next week. <laughs> Lord Jesus, we love you. We are your children, filled with your spirit. And we yearn, we yearn to be more fully formed in and through you. We thank you for the holiness that you've done in us. We thank you that we are not the men and women that we used to be. Praise you for your powerful work in us. But do not let us presume to stop there. Help us, Holy Spirit, to lay our lives before our Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, as you see us and know us, Give us a strong sense of your great love and your presence. And continue, continue to form and transform us. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen.